Hello students, I'm Imani Sharma, your UGC Net Educator. In this new YouTube video, we are going to talk about a new topic which is probability and non-probability sampling technique. But what are they and why are the students, they dread this very topic. They do not know that what is the basic differentiation between the two. So I'll try to break it into chunks, small little chunks and I will try to give you certain acronyms as well to memorize which is a probability technique and which is a non-probability technique of course, right? So first things first, we before jumping on to what are those techniques, we need to know that what is a population and what do we really mean by a sample. Now whenever we want to conduct research, you all must be knowing, if I say I want you all to conduct research on the entire Punjab entire state of Punjab you won't be able to do that because of what reason because people are having different different traits there as well they are living under different conditions there as well so all the population that we are talking about in here it is not really having same traits some of the traits might be similar right so we need to know that whatever we are taking in as a population right when I choose a sample out of that population, first of all, that population should have some traits, right? And same traits that I am talking about here would be beneficial for us when we would want to generalize the results per se, correct? Now, usually if we talk about population, it is something in human terms we say. We generally associate the word population with humans only. But when we talk about research per se, research may we never think of the population just in just humans. We can take pets, dogs, we can take other things, medicines as a population as well. Right? So we need to carefully identify what we need to. In research, does not necessarily have to be humans. But of course, it should be possessing some common trait. And when from that particular population that I am telling you about, another example I will try to give you is golden retrievers. Right? If I say that I want to conduct my research on the dogs, on all breeds of dogs, I won't be able to do that. So I will first of all break it into a different chunk for my population. I will define my target population as just golden retrievers the cutest dogs on this earth right so i will choose them i will conduct the research on them so whenever if i have let's just say 50 golden retrievers here right i will draw a sample of that very thing only so i might take 15 golden retrievers for my research and whenever the results come here with these 15 i will be able to generalize it here right another example is the total number of makeup stores in karol bark new delhi right this is just the population for what reason do i need to have them that will be telling that sample will be telling me that thing right so sample you all must have seen if you buy something at times you get a sample free with it usually happens with makeup brands only that they give you a lip color to try because they are yet to launch that lip color properly in the market so they want to see if the people the customers are liking it so they give you that thing in smaller chunks that is a sample so again the population is a subset you know is a superset the sample here is a subset of the population correct subset of the entire population which means it comes under the population and it will be, of course, small in number as compared to the population. Representative of the population. Why is it representative of the population? Because of the fact that it is having same traits which are there in the population. If I say I want to conduct my research on 50 white American males, right this is the population that i have now when i will draw a sample out of it if i let's just say i draw a sample of 20 white american males which are there right what will i be doing here 
these all the sample will be representative of the entire population because all of them will be white they will be american they will be male so similar traits are there which are there in the population that are present in the sample as well correct other example that we talk about here is a makeup company would like to do all the makeup where it can sell its product the stores it wants to know it has population data we talked about the total makeup stores so it will just try to take a sample of how many you know in how many stores it can sell the data right the products which are there now coming here between a little bit of comparison between the two population is associated with a parameter we measure the population in parameters different different parameters we measure the sample in statistics correct population complete set from where we are going to draw out our sample hence the sample will be a subset of the population correct reports are a true representation of opinion whatever you are having here that is a true representation of which we are going to maintain a balance in our sample that is why we are taking something for the sample from the population here we will have some margin of error because sometimes i can be biased the researcher can be biased there right it contains all members but this one as being the subset it will contain some members which are required for me to have them as my research participants to conduct my research on so this is the population that i was telling you all about which will be consisting of any and every member with having similar traits if i want to choose any population sample will be a subset of the population hence it will be smaller now one thing that i want you all to keep in mind is that the sample size it also matters why do i say that it matters now let's just say that you have the population of 50 golden retrievers that we were talking about but you and they were having 25 males right and 25 female dogs but when you wanted to conduct your research you wanted to of course draw a sample and you just chose 20 right you chose let's just say 10 you chose 10 male dogs but 15 female dogs now i cannot say that this thing is a representative of the entire population because there is a mismatch in the sample that i have chosen so just to create that balance i will have to choose little bit closer i might go in choosing 11 females or 10 females 10 male dogs right so this is when i say and the larger the size this is from the net perspective this has been asked the larger the size of the population the less error on the you know in the sample we can see now first type of probability techniques we have and non probability right so there are sub types in between if we talk about probability uske bhi there are four sub types so sampling techniques are further divided into two parts probability and non probability now talking about probability first just imagine that when you flip a coin in the air there is a probability of you getting heads or tail correct there is a 50 50 chance so 50 50 chance means equal chance is there same is the case with the probability sampling technique that every member whosoever i'm going to choose for my research that member will be having an equal chance of being selected through the examples and the types things will be much easier for you all right first is all the members and every members have a chance of being selected so of course it means that my biasness as a researcher is not there i am just there thinking objectively it is used in quantitative research most of the times we will be talking about quantitative qualitative research in another video of ours right so stay tuned for that as well if you want and yes of course because the research the samples that we choose here in the probability techniques they are much you know they are objectively chosen 
and we as a researcher want to conduct the research which is objective in nature right which is true without any kind of bias without any kind of error so of course if you want your research to be little bit objective most of the times without any kind of biases you can choose probability sampling techniques and we have four types here first is simple random sampling stratified sampling systematic sampling or cluster sampling now how are we going to memorize these four here is the acronym for you all to memorize the probability sampling techniques by names right so in the examination when you all will be sitting you know these are probability sampling techniques and these are non probability c triple s this is how you all are supposed to memorize them cluster right simple random sampling stratified sampling and then we have systematic sampling technique correct c triple s yaad kar sakte ho with the you know help of the ict ICT may we have the full form CSS cascading style sheets here CSS is there but one S is also there or you can simply memorize it like C triple S right now moving further first type of the sampling technique that we are going to talk about under probability is simple random sampling let's let me just break it down for you all in an easier term. you all must have seen the lottery things in your schools lottery nikalte the teachers right what did what did they used to do they used to take the name of each and every student put it in a bowl shake that bowl and of course pick a chit and whosoever's name was written on the chit that person that student won the lottery right so any student out of all the chits which were there in the bowl had the chance of getting selected you also wanted to be there right so of course first is simple random sampling which the name also suggests that you are simply and randomly going to pick out the people which are there to conduct this type of sampling you can use tools like random number generators or other techniques that are based entirely on charts now if i am saying random number generator there are multiple tools available on the internet as well right you can use a random number generator let's just say that if 50 students are sitting in my classroom right now and i randomly assign them with each and every number and then i sit in the computer i open the application for the random number generator a generator right and 50 from the sample of 50 students i just want to pick 20 20 times i will use that random number generator and 20 times whichever number is coming let's just say if number 41 is coming if number 12 is coming if number 1 is coming so till the time i reach 20 maximum participants which which i need for my sample as my of my research i will use a random number generator another example here is you want to select a random sample of 100 employees of company x you assign a number to every employee in the company as i gave you the example of the students in the class right from 1 to 1000 and use a random number generator to select 100 number got my point it is also yes this question has also been asked like which sampling technique is known as a fish bowl method it is simple random sampling which is also known as fish bowl method because a bowl of a fish right you know if i say in which a fish is put it looks like this so you can put your chits in here randomly shake them out and choose your participants right so you as a researcher will also not be biased because you are all, you do not know what chit is going to come with whose name right entirely random method because you don't know so you are being objective here right as easy as assigning numbers to the individuals and randomly choosing from those numbers 
finally the numbers that are chosen are the members or the sample that i wanted to draw for my research right so these people who are here i will be assigning each and all of them with a number and then randomly picking through a number random number generator or using a fishbowl method that is the lottery method as well the chit picking right then we have systematic sampling the name also is suggesting us that there is some kind of system hidden in bit you know in between this kind of sampling but why is it and you know why is it a probability sampling technique if there is a system there now comes this very thing that it is similar to simple random sampling of course because you are randomly going to pick out numbers but how are you going to do that every member of the population is listed with a number but instead of randomly generating numbers individuals are chosen at regular interval right so let me just give you an example here that you will divide your sample that you need with the population right so if i say that i need 50 people from the population of 500 right i will divide them first of all 5 ones are 5 5 tens are 50 so every tenth member in the generation in the population of 500 so what does that mean i will start from 10th then we'll have 20th then 30th person 40th person having the 40th number 50th and so on till i reach the 50 and 50 i'm not so saying here as 50th but till i reach 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 till 50 because i wanted to draw a sample of 50 people correct all employees of the company are listed in an alphabetical order from the first 10 numbers you randomly select a starting point you do not know who is there right whoever's name is there you can do that right of course so you randomly select a number 6 from number 6 onwards every sixth person on the list of the alphabetical order that you were seeing in the company that will be your sample right so every tenth person on the list so 6 16 26 right 36 46 56 66 etc and you end up with a sample of 100 people till you reach to the collection of 100 people correct then see here that we have the regular interval here what are we talking about as regular interval regular interval is like we are having the same differentiation between the numbers if i am choosing 10th 20th 30th all of them are having the difference of 10 10 10 correct here we are having the difference of 3 3 3 so of course i hope this thing is clear right next we have stratified sampling now in stratified sampling what happens is first of all what do we mean by strata strata means that there are groups right so it means that we are going to group the people which are there in different groups right sub populations mean we are going to divide them to use the sampling method you divide the population into sub groups called strata right based on the relevant characteristics so what for example gender age range income bracket etc so i can divide the population into male and female correct these are the two strata that i have created i have a population of 100 out of which 50 are male and 50 are female so i divided the strata now i am going to choose amongst these two why are we using the stratified sampling is here because we want to maintain the equilibrium in the research we sample size i was telling you all about we are wanting to maintain that if i am choosing only five people from here in the male section i am choosing five five from the female so sample size will be of course 10 but it will be equally distributed among the two strata which are there because these two strata can have different characteristics and i want to do my research on both of them right for example the company has 800 female employees and 200 male employees 
you want to ensure that the sample reflects the gender balance of the company so you sort the population into two strata based on gender one is male and the other is female you use a random sampling on each group selecting 80 women from the 800 population right and selecting 20 men from the 200 population correct this is also known as random quota sampling because we are dividing the population into two groups but randomly now memorize this very thing why it is called random quota sampling because in the non probability we are going to do a type of quota sampling right so you need to know it is random hence it is probability randomness is you know associated with probability divide the more extensive population so here you see these are old age people right these are children and these are women so men women children these are divided into different strata another example of the strata is like these people are feeling numb these three these three are feeling happy and these three are feeling sad right so i can choose one 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 member from each group which defines the characteristics of the entire population right here also see two five right then we are choosing the ones with two 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 ka difference then comes cluster sampling now i was telling you about the c triple s we have done triple s left over is c right so c stands for cluster sampling in cluster sampling what do we really mean by clusters clusters are small groups right which are geographically based so dividing the population into subgroups but each group should have similar characteristics to the whole sample that is a subgroup right if it practically possible you might include every individual from each sampled cluster so let's just say let me just give you an example of i was telling you i was giving you the example of punjab only right now when i say i want you all to conduct my research conduct your research on punjab you cannot do that so you will divide it into clusters cluster sampling is geographically based memorize this very thing so i will divide it into different clusters i can say that i want to conduct my research in ludhiana right and let's just say if i just take one thing here now i can divide my population into different things ludhiana jalandhar patiala Okay, so now it will be a little easier for me to conduct my research. Coming back here again to tell you, good for dealing with large and dispersed population, and but here is more risk of error in this type of sampling because most of the times the researcher does not go out on his own to collect the data. He assigns different different people with the task of gathering the data from, let's just say, Ludhiana. के लिए कोई और जाएगा. for jalandhar someone else will go and same is the case with the person from patial right just remember this very thing that it is also called as multi stage sampling why multi stage or dimensional sampling because of the fact now let's just say if i just choose ludhiana out of these three clusters i have divided right i say that i want to conduct my research on ludhiana now entire ludhiana i cannot do my research on so i will further divide it into different villages village 1 village 2 or you know it is not really comprising of villages only but of course if i am telling you that i want to conduct my research on villages only so now i am further dividing it into three villages correct so this is what is known as a multi stage sampling when cluster ko bhi we divide it any further the company has offices in 10 cities example of cluster sampling only we are giving giving all with roughly the same number of employees in similar roles so we have of course we have the managers we have two managers right in different different you know 10 10 offices that we are talking about in 10 cities 
two managers in each of the office and same is the case with other employees as well with the similar rules you don't have the capacity to travel to every office to collect your data so you use random sampling to select three offices now those three offices will be your cluster to conduct the sampling because they are having the same traits people in similar roles right people with the same number of employees or office with the same number of employees so of course you can do your research on these three clusters that you have chosen randomly next comes non probability sampling technique funny way to memorize the way you know different different sub types of non probability sampling technique is acp acq right so this is a funny way this is a funny acronym that i have brought forth here which in which a stands for accidental sampling accidental non random sampling c stands for convenience p stands for purposive which is also known as judgment or judgmental sampling s stands for snowball and q stands for quota you can pause your screens and write these down as well on your notebooks now now you see acp acq and acp acq is associated with non probability sampling techniques right so first is we are going to talk about why is non probability sampling technique different and how it is different from the probability probability may we all are giving the chance the equal chance to every member of getting selected but here in non probability sampling technique the convenience comes into play the researcher can choose who he wants him or her as the sample right often used in exploratory and qualitative research so probability may we deal with quantitative non probability we deal with qualitative research the aim is not to test a hypothesis but about a broad population but to develop an initial understanding of a small or under researched population that is why we use non probability now in probability we usually test something which has been you know created we test certain theories we test certain theorems we test certain you know uh, you know anything which has been established any theory which has been established here we are going to establish a theory we are going to develop that little understanding in the beginning stage so that whenever we want to conduct a full fledged research we can do that here selection criteria is non random so what is it based on if it is non random it is based on the convenience this is one thing that i want you all to memorize remember and recall even sitting for the examination that non probability all the types that we have in acp saq right well there all of us will be seeing that non probability sampling technique all of them use the convenience of the researcher so if a researcher is letting the to choose getting to choose then the research becomes subjective so here the sampling technique is subjective because researcher can let his or her opinions come and you know go along or against with the person that he or she is dealing with easier and cheaper to access because you know you want to ask this person this person this person higher risk of sampling bias because you can be biased you are subjective here you can you are letting your opinions come and hamper the process so of course sampling bias can be there used in qualitative already told you now first type is accidental or convenience sampling so the acp ka this thing is same right accidental or convenient sampling so accidental or convenient sampling mostly they are used in the market research now just for example let's just say that i am randomly moving i'm randomly walking in a street and i start asking people questions that have you used surf excel have you used you know let's just say rim whatever it is there i am asking for the brands of the detergents and some of them will be interested to talk some of them will be giving me the answers some of them won't be giving me the answers but i am choosing the sample according to my convenience that is what accidental or convenience sampling means even the name suggests convenience i am choosing people on my convenience 
most accessible to the researcher the people who are most accessible they will be chosen as the sample by the researcher inexpensive and easy because you know whom to target of course example you are researching opinions about student support services in your university you want to know about the student support services in your university so after each of your classes you ask your fellow students to complete a survey on the topic what was the topic student support services this is a convenient way to gather data but will it be representative of the entire population no you are asking for the student support services in your in, you know university but you are choosing the people just and just from your classroom you are not asking the students from other classrooms as well so your you know sampling technique that you are using here in the convenient ways will be a little biased right so it is not representative of all the students of your university the researcher may take the first 150 persons he meets on any one of the pedestrian paths of a street who are willing to be interviewed or to provide the kind of information that he is seeking hence this is accidental or you are accidentally meeting someone but choosing them based on your convenience that is the convenience sampling that we are talking about here next comes purpose which has another name which is known as judgment sampling now when i say purpose purpose sampling is having some kind of purpose hidden beneath it and only the experts who are there in a field let's just say you are going for an interview in the corporate world so those corporate people will be knowing certain things more than you do right so of course they are the expert another example could be that you all of you will be appearing for the phd interviews right so you are going for the phd interview the person who is sitting in front of you taking the interview will be having more knowledge and will be an expert in a field if we talk about english literature we have indian literature as a branch there and when you start telling the other person that yes indian literature is my forte of course that person will let you know or start asking you questions related to indian literature because it is based on that right select a sample that is most useful for the purposes of the research so the phd person right the supervisor or the interviewer is asking you the interviewee certain questions which might be the ones which you think that you know of right so they are having a purpose that do they want to select you for phd in indian literature right qualitative research because you can keep on asking questions you can go in in depth basically let's just say any interviewer who is in the phd let's just say the phd interviewer that i was telling you all about first of all he will ask you what's your name what have you done etc so on and so forth now when you tell him that you have cleared your ugc net in english literature per se right but you want to do your phd in indian literature he will first of all maybe ask what sparked your interest in indian literature what which is your favorite author in indian literature right so different different things are there which are stored by and that is why it is qualitative because you guys are in a conversation and that conversation is subjective in nature population is very small and specific here right so any interview that is being taken there could be considered so a panel of seniors who are themselves experts at the role select a suitable sample to get the necessary result for example hiring the best candidate for that very role gave you the example of the phd thing next is snowball sampling now just imagine you all must have seen you know a hill which is covered with snow when you see a snowball falling from here it of course will become bigger and bigger when it reaches the end same is the case with snowball sampling you will start with one participant and that participant will let you know about other participants as well right so of course you are choosing that first participant as per your convenience used to recruit participants via other participants for example you are researching experiences of the homelessness in your city since there is no list of the homeless people in the city probability sampling isn't possible so you meet one person 
who agrees to participate in your research and that person will let you be or you know let you come in contact with other homeless people that he or she knows so your sample from one it will get increased from one person it will get increased and from them as well it is going to get increased राइट यू ऑल मस्ट हैव हर्ट सर्टन थिंग इन सलमान खान मूवी तुम आगे चल के तीनों की तीन लोगों की हेल्प करना और उनको बोलना कि आगे तीन की हेल्प कर राइट सो स्नोबॉल सैम्पलिंग इज समथिंग लाइक दैट ओनली दैट फ्रॉम वन यू आर रीचिंग आउट टू मल्टीपल सैंपल्स दैट यू वॉन्टेड टू गैदर सैंपल साइज शुड बी स्मॉल एंड नॉट इजिली अवेलेबल दैट इज वेन यू यूज दिस काइंड ऑफ टेक्निक एंड इट इज नोन एज a referral program because you are referring some other person with the same traits as you right then comes quota sampling now what are quotas quotas are fixed category right now you all must be thinking that ma'am is telling us that quotas are also categories and groups and of course stratified sampling means strata is all strata are also groups so how quota is different from the stratified sampling technique my dear students quota is different from you know stratified sampling technique in one way and that way is in quota sampling we are choosing the sample based on our convenience but in the stratified sampling we were using random random number generators or we were using some random technique to get hold of the sample right so here convenience is the key and that is why it is again different from the stratified sampling researchers choose these individuals according to specific traits or qualities they decide and create quotas so that this research samples can be useful in collecting data example would be here right a cigarette company wants to find out what age group prefers what brands of cigarettes in a particular city so they apply survey quota on age groups of 21 to 30 31 to 40 41 to 50 and 51 plus so of course they have divided the population into different different quotas to know their preference of the cigarette brand that they want to use of course these people might be having a different preference than these so that is going to give them an edge to know which age group likes what kind of cigarette right so of course this will be there another example could be and of course memorize this very thing that this involving individuals that represent a population of course here right but i am going to choose certain people with certain fixed categories only decide and create quotas quotas as i already told you quotas are fixed categories these samples can be generalized now one thing i want you all to note down in quota sampling as well is that even quota sampling can be divided into further groups cluster may be divided we know that it is known as multi stage or multi dimensional you know sampling this thing as well quota sampling is also known as multi dimensional whereas cluster is known as multi stage right so let's just say if i want to gather the data on males and females but of course i can further divide the males into 21 plus and you know 21 below of course here as well in females i can also do the same 21 plus and below 21 so further multi stage may it is also getting divided further right now let's just revise what we have done probability uses the theory of probability so that every participant is randomly selected having an equal chance here based on my convenience the researcher's convenience non random in nature because my ease of accessibility is being seen here population here selected arbitrarily based on my convenience here randomly it will be selected conclusive research will lead on to the results that i wanted to test but here i wanted to do some kind of initial data gathering that is why it is exploratory in nature probability 
takes longer because you are going to measure the participants in a quantitative way. Hence, it is time taking. And of course, non probability is quick and easy because you are doing, of course, qualitative research and you are choosing participant based on your convenience. Hence, it is easier for you to conduct at a smaller scale. Unbiased, hence, it is objective. And this one is biased, hence, it is subjective. Correct? Here we want to prove the hypothesis in the probability techniques. We have the hypothesis already. We just want to prove it. Hence, it is deductive. In deductive, we have the theory already. We just want to prove it. We just want to test it. But in non-probability sampling technique, we do not want to test it. We want to discover. Hence, exploratory research. And it is quantitative because you are measuring certain things randomly. Here it is qualitative because you are delving deep into conversations in a subjective manner. Right? Certain questions for you all. Identify the non-probability sampling procedures from the following. The answer to this question is option C. That is B, quota sampling, D and E. Quota sampling we did just now, snowball we did just now and dimensional or multidimensional that is a subtype of what? Quota sampling only that is a non-probability sampling technique. Next question, probability sampling technique. You can pause your screens and try to answer. The answer to this question is option B that is A, C and E. Cluster sampling, correct? Systematic sampling where every nth, nth here stands for you dividing your population with your sample, right? So every nth member, whatsoever number comes, will be your participant, will be your sample. A, C and E, stratified, divided into different stratas and based on those very groups, you are going to conduct your sampling technique and your research, right? So, I hope these things were easier for you all and you all memorize the ACPSQ for non-probability and C triple S for probability sampling techniques, right? I will see you again in another video. Till then, you all keep on studying. Thank you so much and have a good day.